back to another episode of Walking Christ Podcast, a show where we inspire the masses to become financially free while building God's kingdom. On a podcast today, we have Ms. LaShondra Pounds. Ms. LaShondra Pounds is a seven-figure home care business coach and a former CEO of a multi-dollar pediatric nursing uh, um, agency. In this podcast, we're going to talk about her journey to building a seven-figure home care agency. So thank you for being here. Mr. Sean, no. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here to talk about <laughs> to talk about wealth and Christ. So, uh, where do we begin? I mean, this is like so much to go over. Like those two subjects, I just absolutely love. No problem, not a problem. But how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Um, I have. Um, my two year two year old is um, out of school today, so I have multiple things <laughs> uh, to juggle uh, today, as well as I went to the dentist. But all is well. I'm doing fantastic here in the Washington D.C. area. That's good. That, that is that's good to hear. That's good to hear. So my first question I have is, what led you to want to create your home care, your own home care agency? Okay, well, I was not looking to get into business. I went to college to work for somebody else. Um, that's pretty much, you know, we, we, some people, maybe not now, but back then, I went to school to, you know, get a higher paying job. And that's what I did. I got out of school and I worked with stockbrokers. I worked for what was called back then Solomon Smith Barney. So I know I, know I look young, thanks to my mom, but I'm telling my age, I graduated in 2000. Can you believe that? Wow. 2000 from American University. And I immediately worked with stockbrokers. So um, I, I love to share that part of my story because a lot of times people are looking for their skill sets on the outside. And sometimes God is giving you your, you know, your skill sets that you would need for your business while you're working for somebody else. So that's exactly some of the things that I learned. Um, so I had decided to leave um, that and uh, work with merchant banking, which was a higher level of investment and stuff like that. And then I just had a, a shift. I basically had what a lot of people call now a pivot. Now it wasn't a pivot I expected. And so I wasn't prepared for it. Um, and then I was sitting in church one day and um, I was sitting probably in the second or third row and um, the minister at the time pointed to me and he said, God said, you're going to start a business. And so I looked behind me because I knew he wasn't talking to me because I was soaking in myself. And if I can be transparent, I had just lost my job. So I had um, this, this one particular company I was going to be managing, you know, multiple millions and probably even billions of dollars. And I lost that job. So I was crushed. So I was sitting in church crushed. And maybe that's like, you know, a message to somebody that, you know, you're when you're exiting one door, you know, God's opening up another one and you're not even paying attention because you're just like, what's going on back there, you know, in that other space. So so I'm going to start the business. So I started thinking about all these other things of business that I was going to do. But within a six month time period, because I was like about July to January, I connected with a woman who went to my church who ended up becoming my first mentor. And she was, she was recently diagnosed with, a, with a terminal disease and she said, I'm going to help you start your own business. And so I thought it was going to be something else, some other hobbies or whatever. And I went into an area that I was completely unaware of. So that's another tip that, you know, it's not always what people say is your passion. It's not always that because honestly, home care, health care wasn't my passion at the time. So I grew to learn how to navigate in that business. And I took my skill sets of, I have a degree in international business. I have strong marketing um, background. And then I'm just a natural people person. And I use that to um, grow my business from 2006 to 2008. 
uh, we generated over 3.3 million in revenue in a short amount of time. And if you think about it, that was, um, that included getting registered. So like the hand of God was really on um, a lot of things I was doing because, I mean, it was just basically ridiculous that it grew that fast. It was just like a really ridiculous amount of uh, growth um, and it continued to grow. So once I hit 1 million, I never, thankfully, never went to the 600. I stayed in seven figures, stayed in seven figures the whole time. Oh, wow. 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 That, that was pretty, that was pretty dope. And just from that, you know, I definitely um, want to break some more things in there. You know, the first thing that, that drew my attention is you said that sometimes, you know, the skills that you, you would need for your business or future endeavors, you know, you learn it through jobs. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to someone, you know, who, you know, wants to start a business, but they don't necessarily know, you know, what kind of business, but they can learn a skill at a job that could benefit them in their business later on if they do go on to start? Uh, that's a great question. Um, a lot of people, the first thing they think they, they need to learn to be a business owner, to be an entrepreneurship is leadership. They just feel like, oh, I need to know how to be a leader, but that's not necessarily true. I'm going to go against learn how to be a leader because oftentimes um, the entrepreneur is a black sheep he or she is somebody that is going against everything that everybody else around them is doing so that's not necessarily leadership that's probably a little bit of rebellion and, and I'm not promoting rebellion here definitely not especially among us Christians but you have to be willing to step out and do something different I and mean, look at the story of Abraham he stepped out right he did something different. He went away from every everything he knew to do something different. So one of the things I learned as a skill set for one of my jobs is um, how to manage um, high net worth clients. And it was, a, it was a form of customer service, but basically what my boss at that time told me uh, she told me like little lessons that I picked up as what we call nuggets, right? right? Of how to treat people who have um, large sums of money. And so she said, you know, people will forgive you if you, you know, make a mistake because, you know, we're dealing with the stock market, you know, they expect to lose money. So in reference to home care, people may expect that, you know, there's times where their, their child or their loved one's going to get sick. But she said they they won't understand if you consistently spell their name wrong on their check. And I listened to that, um, and it was like some mistakes will make you lose a client versus other mistakes won't. And so it really helped me to, you know, be aware of some of those things. And sometimes these lessons are subtle. Sometimes these skills are subtle. So like I said, that was a lesson. That was a skill set of how to handle high net worth clients. Somebody else may be learning how to um, problem solve, right? Problem solving is a very, a very um, essential skill for any business owner. You got to know how to problem solve. And even if you're in a, your existing job and somebody keeps coming to you, hey, you know, how do you do this? How do you do this? You know, take that seriously that they trust you to handle something and to problem solve and that you can essentially do that in your own business. Right. That, 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 that is wonderfully said. Um, and another thing I, you know, I want to go to based on, you know, your introduction about yourself into business. You spoke about that, you know, sometimes doing business is not really about your passion, you know, mm -hmm. not about what you comfortably good at. You know, healthcare was not your passion, it's not something you were interested in at that point. So how would you um, advise or talk to somebody, you know, who's, you know, passionate, you know, passionate about something, but 
it may not be the right fit. You know, maybe their skill set it will may work in like something like the stock market, but mm -hmm. you know, they need to do something different. Well, um, my advice for that is um, every every entrepreneur, every business owner has a higher level of ambition than another person, right? So when you recognize that and you can use that in, you know, transferring, you know, your skill set. Let me let me go back. So your drive is going to help you with wanting to do more than where you're currently at. So I'm sitting in the, I'm, at, I'm in a job, I'm making good money because I was making good money. For people my age, I was making good money. I had a prestigious job, but I'm, I'm bored. My drive is not matching my speed, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, you know, you kind of like twiddling your thumbs. And so then that may get you interested in other things. And somebody might just come across you and say, yeah, I'm doing this now. I'm flipping houses now. Okay, well, how does that work? They may just have a very casual conversation with you, but your drives are saying, hmm, maybe this is a more I, I need to learn. And so then I will kind of pull you into learning something that is out of your, you know, scope of understanding, you know, your background. And then when that meets up, if you are learning it quickly, that's a good sign. Okay. If you're learning it quickly, that's a good sign. Because I was picking up on things. I have to mention that my first mentor was a registered nurse. I'm not. I was never, never a nurse. And so most, most people who start a home care agency, they feel like they have to be a doctor or a nurse or have some kind of healthcare background. But as she was telling me things, I was picking it up faster than somebody who was a nurse. So that was a sign to me like, okay, I can do this. I can run it like this. I can, I can build this up. And like I said, but for the speed that we grew, that was a, a clear indication of um, that God's hand was on my business. Uh, that, is one, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Very wonderful. And another thing I definitely want to ask, you know, based on, you know, you get into the healthcare um that you spoke about is your faith you know you just lost your job and you know you get a word from your pastor that you're going to start a business um then from there you met this lady mm -hmm. who was, happens to be a nurse and she introduced you to your business so how has how did your faith you know help you like you know trust and not get so i guess skeptical because oftentimes you know people especially as christian we may get a word you know then start you know lining up but we mm -hmm. never take that step you know we always trying to guide i need a clearer you know clearer answer but as clear as we can get the answers like right in front of us so how did your faith play a role for you in that beginning steps of your journey um another great question the my faith so the situation presented itself that my first mentor, remember I said she was terminally ill. Yeah. So um, in mentorship, it's not always, sometimes it's other areas, you know, so it hits, it can hit your personal life. Um, and one thing that I'll go back to is um, within that two year period, God showed me a lot of character things that I needed to adjust, which I did not have I would not had would not have had that had I not been with that mentor. So she was terminally ill. So one of our arrangements was that I had to pick her up every morning, Monday through Friday, to go to prayer. I was so tired, but that was my arrangement, right? Because sometimes you're you can't afford your mentor the information that they have to give you, you could not pay them enough to give you the shortcut. 
right? So part of my payment was picking her up every morning because she was believing God for her healing. And so during that time, I would pray. I wasn't just going to drop her off, right? <laughs> so I would pray. I would go in there and pray. And God was just like downloading things like, okay, do your marketing like this. Do this. I know they said you can't do it this way, but do it that way anyway. So I was literally getting downloads of things to do for my for, for registering my business, for starting my business. And so that was my initial foundation. At any time that I feel stuck or stagnant, I said, oh, I got to go back to what I did initially, right? I got to go back to, you know, you know, how I got started. So if my prayer time in the morning is not there, then I'm going to notice some stagnation in my business. So for you, if you got a word from God that um, he, he wants you to start a business, like he, like he told me, one thing I didn't do, because maybe I was just too naive to do, is worry about how and where the money's going to come from. And I think we get too much into the details when that's not our job. Our job is to not work out the details of the business plan that God has given us. You know, he's given you the business idea. Our job is to not work out the business, the details of the business plan. Our, our details is to ask God for it, right? So if you do that, instead of, you know, feeling like, well, maybe it's not supposed to happen because I just got another bill saying I owe for this credit card. So this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen because uh, I, I can't be in debt and start a business. Do you know how many people start a business and they're in debt? Now, I'm not promoting debt, but your way of doing it is definitely not how it's going to happen. And I know that for sure. <laughs> uh, that, that, is, that, is, that is definitely well said. Um, and one thing I definitely want to hit on and I want you to elaborate is like the mentorship that you said you the, you had from your first mentor. You said you wasn't able to afford it. And many people are in a situation where they can't afford like a mentorship, you know, where it's 2,500 things. You know, how would you tell them to go about looking for mentorship? Um, that's, yeah, that's another great question. So you, sometimes our mentors are in books, right? And you want to read everything from that person because they took the time to put their thoughts into a book. So, um, my mentor now, that was one of the first things that I was told when I joined with her mentorship program. If you want to learn how things are done or read her books. And it just never occurred to me like, yeah, they're putting out a lot of their secrets in their books. But guess what? If you want to hide something, put it in a book, put it in a book. So sometimes our, our mentors are in a book. I've never met Sarah Blakely. I love um, her story, but I consider like some of the things that she does, like her quotes to be, you know, to mentor me in some way. So if she ever had a conference, I would go to it. So sometimes you can't afford the one-on-one -on -one monthly ongoing, but you should definitely plan some kind of investment in yourself in relation to that person. Um, whenever they have something, you, you, you get the book, you go to the conference, you listen to it, and you, you let it help you um, grow, whether that's spiritually, financially, or as a business person. Uh, no, that, no, you're 100% right. You're 100% right. I feel like oftentimes people um, neglect the fact that you could read a book and buy a book for twenty dollars and learn, learn some information and apply it. Um, so Tom, I'm glad you definitely spoke about that. Um, like you mentioned, your journey to you know making six figures quite quite quickly. Um, I'm sure you had some challenges you had to overcome during that you know that two or three years 
process, what were some challenges you had to overcome to get your business to that seven figure and consistently, you know, stay at that, that status? Uh, so the main challenge I can remember to growing my company to seven figures in basically two years, I always say it's a little bit less, it's like 22 months, right? Is um, there were some things my first mentor definitely did not prepare me for. And so that's something also to consider uh, that, you know, because you hear me say now I have a, a new mentor, so I'm at a different level. So now I, I need I need new stuff. I need a mm -hmm. I need a I need a mentor for the level that I'm on now. So we had gotten this client with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and um, the the it was about 18 hours a day. So just imagine we were working with this one client for 18 hours a day, and the, the pay was really good. Um, I can't even remember. It, it was at least five figures a month for this one client. So just imagine that five figures a month from this one client. And, but for three months, almost even a little bit over three months, we didn't get paid. We didn't get paid because of how some things were set up that we um, couldn't figure out how to um, get them to pay, right? And, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, you know, I don't want to get in trouble with you guys. So I'll just leave it like that. You know, it's gonna be. A... <laughs> but they weren't. They weren't very helpful, right? Yeah. So fast forward, I had to survive off of. I wouldn't even say savings. Just faith. It was just faith. I mean, it was. Thank God, I didn't have a lot of bills at that time because I didn't. I didn't buy a house into my third year of business. And, and so this is also going to help you because you, you know God has had this hand on your business and that you can trust him to continue your business on when you, when you start to buy stuff. Because that means I got to regularly pay this bill, right? I got to regularly yeah. pay a mortgage. I got to regularly pay um, a, a car note. So by that third year, I bought, um, I bought my first house. So long story short, um, that, one, that one really taught me a lesson about, um, of course, not spending before you, <laughs> before you uh, get paid. I didn't really do a lot of that, but just really, um, I had to be, become more prayerful to break through, to finally get paid. And so, so it doesn't stop. Like I started praying to get started. And my next prayer point was, how do I handle this problem? And it's almost like in the Bible, like they had to face different challenges. And it was just like, okay, you consult with God. And then he tells you, okay, this is how you do this. You don't do this over here you only do this right here so it will it's different strategies for different issues and you do have to be prayerful people always say my best dress uh, business strategy is prayer but you better stick to that because you're going to need it you're going to need it you're right, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> well yeah that you're right um yeah, right. So how did you, you know, so how would you, um, how do you teach people to get started in this, you know, creating their own agency? Um, what are the steps, you know, that you need? Um, and like you say, you know, you stay started this and you don't, you're not a nurse, you're not a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so how can someone get started and not be in, in any of those different career fields? Okay, so um, the three main things I tell people to do when uh, they contact me is um, first you need to know um, if you're gonna start a non-medical home care agency or a medical home care agency. And I'll just do a short blurt because, because my first mentor was a registered nurse, I didn't have that choice. So I started a medical home care agency and I'm glad I did, but if I was, if I did not have, 
if I would have known better, I probably would have been too scared to start a medical home care agency only because it's more responsibility. So a non-medical is like um, working with the senior, you know, running errands, um, meal preparation, you know, keeping them company. It's non-skilled. It's called non-skilled because um, a LPN, which is a licensed practical nurse or registered nurse, won't do those skills. But a medical home care agency can this uh, is skilled care, and it's prescribed by a doctor. So only a licensed or registered nurse can do that, right? So more regulations, more um, oversight, right? So I say, figure out that that's what you want to do. You don't have to be a nurse if you want to start a medical home care agency, but you will have to have a nurse on staff. Then after you figure out the first part, the second part is go to your state website and read the regulations. The regulations for your license will help you with understanding what you'll be responsible for. I don't advise people to do a business plan initially. I'm, I'm not anti-business plan, but your business plan will change. It's better you do a business outline. What does that look like? Okay, what's my, my business name? What kind of clients do I want to serve? You know, after you've decided medical or non-medical, you know, how I would go about marketing my business. What are the areas I want to serve? how many employees I want to have. So it's more like a, I don't want to say a wish list, but, you know, basically putting down all the, jotting down all your thoughts, doing a good brain dump of what you want your business to look like. And then you can go from there. Then you can do some planning from there because if you go do a business plan or pay somebody to do a business plan, you really don't have enough information about how your business is going to run based upon statistics that were found online. So that's just my opinion. It's like, you can't, you almost can't use statistics at so early in the startup. And then um, if you're working, start putting away money every pay period for your business expenses. Um, I'm not saying start a business account, but just start putting away, you know, $50 here or $100 there uh, for your business expenses. Because when they come up, you want to be able to say, okay, well, this account, I'm not touching over here. And I got to I gotta pay to go to this conference or I got to pay to get this business registration. Okay, it's about $3,000 saved up. Okay, I'm just going to swipe my card. It's there. So you... That's my first three things I would suggest you do. That's great. That's great. And what would you say is the amount of money one needs to like, you know, actually get started? Um, that's different for every state. Um, okay. I had probably $500. So I can't say, but I worked the whole time. I worked the whole time. So it goes back to your grind of uh, how you can, um, your, your state will determine, reason why I say your state will determine how much money, like say for example, California, the license costs $5,000. For Virginia, it's $500. Oh. So every oh. state is different. And every state is different um, for getting licensed. Mm -hmm. So then if you say California, $500, and then if I have to pay for a consultant or have somebody help me write my policies and procedures, right? You could be looking at $15,000, $20,000 versus maybe in, maybe in uh, Virginia, you can maybe get away with, you know, uh, 6,000, just, you know, hypothetical. Okay. Okay. So okay. I don't have a set answer for that, uh, for that question, but yeah, it's, um, you can make it work. You can make it work. 
Um, and that's why I also say put down those costs on this that business outline. How much is the cost for my license? You know, I want mentorship. It's going to cost this much um, for, for six months. Okay, what does it look like if I don't get it? So. That, that is good. And I know like a big part, you know, in terms of, you know, building a nursing agency or home care agency is being able to network with the hospital, you know, make connections with the doctors. So yeah. how would you recommend people to go about making connections and, you know, networking with these people that they wouldn't necessarily need to hire or have a relationship with? Right. So the marketing side, um, I have some things on my um, Instagram um, channel, Savvy Bus at Savvy Business Chick, or my YouTube for, you know, some, some free marketing tips. Um, but to answer, so just in case I don't answer all, you know, answer it completely, I, I say use LinkedIn. LinkedIn has some good um, uh, places where you can find refer referral sources and you have to get yourself out there. Um, another thing that my, another thing that my first mentor did not tell me that my my next mentor did um, is that you need to learn how to sell. So I would say in any business, even if it was, if it's not home care, you have to learn how to sell. And I'll give you an example that when a customer's family member is on the phone and they're asking about services, I have to be in sales mode to get the to get the home visit because they haven't made up their mind. They're between me and maybe three other agencies. Now, if I can get the home visit, then I still got to sell. I got to get them to sign the consent. The consent that says they're going to pay me, pay the agency X, Y, Z, uh, 40 hours a week, blah, 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 40 hours yeah, a week. Um, at whatever whatever rate I gotta sell that so remember I said really the marketing I had to learn how to sell I, my mentor Robert Uber Angel he told me you gotta learn how to sell when he told me that I start I start going to get books on how to sell because I didn't have a mentor I didn't have my let me not say a mentor I didn't have like a person that I could think of, like, who is good at selling? So I just start, you know, looking, went to the bookstore with different books. So, but any business, you got to learn how to sell. If you have a, a, a business with dogs, with pet care, you got to learn how to sell your services. So that's an essential um, skill you, you need to have um, for any business, and especially for home care. And when you sell, and I know a lot of people don't like sales, you basically get them to agree to working with you. So yeah. there's a book I've recommended um, in my Facebook group called Selling Online, right? So it was like a book of a month and um, they're not giving me any kickback guys. So <laughs> selling online because, you know, you can post on Instagram, right? You can post on Facebook, but you have to your your post has to sell when it comes yeah. across that person they have to know that it's talking to them it's speaking directly to their situation you're right yeah yeah 100 yeah 100 yeah 100 percent mm -hmm. right um i guess the one thing i do want to ask you know how do you compete you know with getting a nurse you know or um those people like they're that key to the business to come to your agency versus going work in the hospital mm -hmm. again sales is really important because i tell my hr people and now i have corporate clients that i go in and i restructure their organization your your hr people have to sell the job to a nurse And that, that's a lot different if I'm working in an office 
um, building and I'm working in an office, corporate office, and we, we need we need another admin. Go put a post. We go put a post. Up. They put the post up. People respond, right? With yeah. nurses, nah. I got so many, so many options. So you gotta sell it. Like, what will make me choose you over you? And sometimes it's not saying stuff like, "Oh, we have a four hundred one k will match," stuff like that. Because I can care less. I can care less about that. Oh. I mean, that's to be honest. So um, you you need to develop a culture for your, if you're an existing agency, you need to check to see if you have a culture um, for the your caregivers and your nurses, meaning like, do they feel valued? Do they feel appreciated? Is the morale good? even though they're working out in the field is a morale good because then, you know, have you ever been to one of those offices or companies and they're like, how is it to work here? They want to know how is it to work here? And if you can have some good feedback that people are saying, I like working here, they got good cases, then that's going to help you with attracting good quality staff. Because sometimes you don't always have the extra dollar to pay them. Sometimes you don't always have that, especially not if you have um, a client that's on like Medicaid or Medicare, those costs are fixed. So it's not like you got wiggle room to say, oh yeah, yeah, we got your 3% raise this year. No, you, can, you can't always do that. You can't always do that. Oh, that, that. That is great. That is great. And that leads into my next question. You know, what would you say is some key characteristic that a home care agency needs to have? that will set them apart from other agencies? A key characteristic um, you uh, uh, that they should have is that they should eventually develop a specialty, something that they're, they are known for. Um, and a lot of times people go in and they're, they're, generic, they're generic, they're basically a copy paste of another agency that's just a couple of miles ahead or is, you know, two spots down from them on a Google search. They're saying the same thing, using the same pictures, all of that, right? So what you have to do is you, do you, you may not know how to do it, but you should do some market research. You should look up your competitors and you should see what they're not offering. And then again, when I said, I didn't know home care wasn't my passion, then you go ahead and, you know, see how you can possibly maybe be that number one home care agency that helps um, type one diabetic patients. You know, you, and it, and it may not happen overnight, but you know, you eventually build upon what your specialty is some people call it a niche but you know i'm calling it specialty for this example that's good that's good that's good so now that you know you no longer see you know what do you you know currently do and how can you continue to help people within this journey of home care you see oh okay uh, i am a mom i'm a wife and that definitely keeps me busy i have two toddlers <laughs> <laughs> I have two toddlers. I'm always sharing my life uh, with them and their development. Um, I work with um, home care agencies if you're aspiring to get started um, all throughout the U.S. Um, I have worked with um, clients in the U.K. and I've worked with clients in Australia. Um, I actually have one client uh, or mentee in Australia and she was about to get a franchise and I discouraged her from doing that um, and helped her to get licensed uh, even all the way over there across uh, way across the pond <laughs> and um, just help people with establishing their home care agency and putting on their CEO hat so I didn't learn to become a CEO, and I think it's like my sixth or eighth year. I was what they say, 
working in my business, but not working on my business. So Mm -hmm. I was making a lot of money. The company was making a lot of money, but um, I probably could have been making more if I would learn that lesson sooner, how to be working on my business and not in my business. And so I, I, I definitely help a lot of existing home care CEOs um, that are making money with how to strengthen their organization. Um, that, that's actually something I've been really enjoying lately um, over the past six months, just helping a lot of different agencies, just like kind of like rebuild, especially after COVID. Um, and get things on track, whether it's the, with their recruitment, their marketing, or their organizational structure. So I don't call it uh, consulting. I, I have a mentorship program for home care CEOs. And that, that, that is definitely good. Um, now, the question I have based on that is, uh, actually I have a couple questions. You know, you say you discourage, you know, your mentee in Australia from getting a franchise. Is there a reason why when you should go building your own agency versus just joining um, a current one franchise and, and going that route? Well, her particular situation, she asked me. So if you ask me, um, I advised her that it really wasn't a, um, a great trade-off. Like you, for that particular franchise, she had to put up a certain amount of money she was getting policies and procedures. She was getting some branding, but um, she would be restricted. Um, one of my friends um, owns a Visiting Angels. Again, nothing against them, but if you're restricted to a certain area. So if she gets you know, a call outside of her area, she can't serve that person. Mm-hmm. And it was just a couple of other things that I just said, you know, um, don't go for that right now. Don't go for that right now. Do, um, just, you know, get your license and, you know, basically, you know, you can grow your business organically yourself. Because sometimes yeah. it's, it just, it, it's not as helpful as you think. Well, that's good. And another thing I had to ask, you know, you're saying that now you're a mother, um, so I'm sure you like you had to make a transition and put someone in place of helping run the business, the home care agency, um, so you're not working it, but you're working on your business. Um, so how did you go about finding the right person so, like, you know, hand it off so, you know, you're able to spend time with your family, spend time with your kids, um, that you're not so much worried about the business and business still going well? Right. Well, you start your succession plan early. Um, you're, you're supposed to have an administrator for a home care agency. It's, so, it's somewhat like an executive director. Um, and so that administrator is over the agency. Then also had a director of nursing. So um, actually, I'm not sure if you knew this part of my story, but the same exact month, three years ago, 2018, the same exact month that I had my son October, on October 1st, uh, October, I sold my company. So I built, a, built my company up to you know, be, be purchased. And also I was out of the office. I was out of the office when I learned how to be a CEO anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm answering part of that question. <laughs> um, I was taking vacations, uh, like at least twice a week, uh, twice a year, ten day vacations. So I had built enough systems in my office, so it was running without me. And I didn't have that before because I had to be in the office in order for things to run, for you know, for things to come past my desk. But I would say, at like my uh, being in business for 15 years at like probably like my eighth year, I started really developing systems and I would train my staff on those systems every year. Okay. It's that time of the year again. We're going to retrain on this. What are we going to be? We, we trained on scenarios. What would, what, what if this happened? What if this happened? And so they were well prepared for any situation. If 
I was out of the office. Wow, that, that, that's good. That is good that you definitely prepare your company um, for anything that could possibly happen. Um, that's really great. That's really great. Cause most people don't, and it's important to keep reinforcing so they can understand the mission statement mm -hmm. of the company. Um, so the only thing I, I definitely want to say thank you for your time. You know, thank you for coming here, sharing your story. Um, I guess the other question I will have is how can someone, you know, who's interested in, you know, I know you say you have a program, um, mentorship, could you talk more about your mentorship and how people can get involved? In your mentorship? Sure. My mentorship program, um, uh, I politely say it's not for everybody. <laughs> I am very selective who I work with um, because that's how mentorship should be. Mentorship should be very intimate. It should be like, it's not just about starting your business, growing your business. Um, just as much as I'm sharing with you that I'm a wife and mom, I need to know certain things. Are you, are you a, a dad that, are you a dad? Are you a husband? Are you a wife? Are you, a I need to know certain things so I can know how to help you still carry that same role and build your business at the same time. Cause people seem, just seem to think they can only do one or the other. Right. Mm -hmm. So with my home care CEO, Normally I have someone contact me. I have um, a, a free uh, consultation call, 10 minutes. And during that call, you know, I can pick up if they're a good fit. And then sometimes I'll say, okay, let's you know, consider working together. I might send them some information about my mentorship program. It's one-on-one. -on -one. So it's one-on-one -on -one sessions with me even if you're in California or New Jersey or New Mexico, we do it on Zoom. And then we build um, a plan for either that person to get started or grow their business. And I have some rock star mentees that have just taken action like with uh, so many different things going on and have seen results very fast. And it's basically the same blueprint that I used them uh, with my mentor. And I just um, basically share it with them. If they have some other things that are, um, I sometimes may say, oh, you know what? You mentioned that you need to work on this. Here's a book I want you to read, or here's a book I want you to do an audio, audio, audio book. So it's more than just focus on home care, focus on home care. It is about the whole person and ultimately develop, developing them into a seven-figure home care CEO. That's great. That's great. And where do you see the future of the home care agency? Um, like in terms of like, where do you see it going? Uh, in general? Yeah, in general. I feel like um, they're going to, um, they saw that, that, uh, it was much needed in, um, you know, with people being home uh, for the lockdown. What's going to, I feel like it's still a lucrative business. However, you need to know that home care is extremely regulated. And you need to keep uh, up to date on those regs. That's why I said one of the first things is to read the regulations. So you know what you are responsible for. I think more people are gonna want their, their loved ones at home than a nursing home or a assistant living facility because they did not like that during COVID, they could not go see them. They didn't know what was going on with them. And so then um, they may just be an influx of more people staying home. And that's a good um, advantage for you if you are listening to this and you want to start start a home care agency you should um, definitely um, pursue that especially before they make any changes you know like how they you can get grandfathered in so, you know I tell people I said go ahead and get the license before they decide they're not giving out any licenses anymore wow it's a it's yeah, couple, couple of states that said, we're not doing it. We got too many people. 
we got too many agencies. We're not we're not giving out any more licenses. So go ahead and do that. What what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of failure? Are you some people are afraid of failure and some people are afraid of success? A lot of people want to say, well, you know, they're gonna be asking me for money. Don't worry about that. <laughs> go do what God called you to do so you can stop um, and stop worrying about other things. Um, you can fulfill your purpose in the marketplace. Fulfill your purpose in the marketplace. That's great. That's great. I want definitely want to say thank you again, Ms. Pounds, you know, for your time, you know, sharing your story. Um, if you can leave a word of wisdom, what would that be for the audience, for those who are listening? Um, my word of wisdom for you is to um I'll make it a little bit unique for women. Sorry, guys. So, so, um, you know, we always talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, right? Well, I want you to know that she was a businesswoman. And the Bible points out so many, so many ways that she was a businesswoman. But also take note that she, it says she had her own money because she bought a field. She also had multiple businesses. So once you start a home care business or start a pet care business, you have inside of you to start other businesses. You can duplicate success. Then you, she had helpers. You need help. You cannot do everything on your own. And you don't just need help. You need the right help. Then. She was up late sometimes and she woke up early. Sometimes you're going to lose some sleep. And then my last point about her that I um, thought was very significant is it says that the law of kindness was on her tongue. So you don't have to be what the world says, you know, that boss dot 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 to be a strong businesswoman I can, can give you strength in a, in a different way so that you can be powerful in the boardroom in the marketplace yeah that's my advice <laughs> no, that, that, that is well said and i'm glad that you um, you mentioned the Proverbs 31 woman, because um, oftentimes, you know, women are kind of discouraged from starting businesses. You know, and you know, I personally have read the Proverbs 31. And yeah, you know, business, she was business. She had her own, everything you said mm -hmm. um, is definitely true and surprising. Most people don't read it and actually mm -hmm. apply that into their daily life. Um, so where can people continue to stay in touch with you? Um, are they interested in your course, or your mentorship? Um, how can people stay in touch with you? If you guys can follow me on Instagram, I'm there mostly. I'm also, I'm on Instagram at Savvy Business Chick. I'm on Facebook at Savvy Business Chick. I'm on Instagram mostly. And I'm also on TikTok everywhere at Savvy Business Chick. And uh, you can always DM me or you can also visit my website at SavvyBusinessChick.com. So that's everything Savvy Business Chick, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I hope those who are listening, you know, like always you guys apply, you know, not just only listen to this information, but actually go and apply. Uh, if you guys don't know, you know, I have a study guide which can show you how you can get started in the stock market completely for free. You can get it on my website, wealthandprisebrand.com. And being that said, I hope you guys enjoy this episode and see you guys next week.